Welcome to our brand new Apple TV 4K second generation getting started tutorial series produced by the tech juggernaut at www.ttjtech.net. At TTJ, we strive to create powerful training opportunities for all of our customers on a variety of Apple products, accessories, software, and services. It is our goal to give you the best experience possible. Welcome to Getting Started with Apple TV 4K Second Generation, produced by the Tech Juggernaut. My friends, welcome. I'm Trainer Matt of TTJ Tech, the tech juggernaut. And we are absolutely thrilled to be introducing you to the brand new Apple TV. We are focused on learning to use the Apple TV with voiceover. And so when conducting a training session such as this, it is necessary for us to make a few assumptions. First and foremost, we're going to assume that you find it necessary to use the Apple TV with the voiceover screen reader. If you do not wish to use the Apple TV with voiceover, we do have many other resources available to you that offer a non-voiceover perspective on using this device. We also need to assume that you are able, in one way or another, to access the Apple TV user guide produced by Apple. This tutorial series, which you're listening to now, is not a replacement for the awesome support that Apple offers, including its own resources, such as the Apple TV user guide, which can be found on Apple support by simply doing a Google search for Apple support, Apple TV user guide, which can also be found in the Apple Books app. Instead, this tutorial serves to provide additional information for those wishing to use the Apple TV with voiceover. The first thing we'd like to do is to talk about basic setup, and then we will get oriented to the new Apple TV Siri remote second generation. For basic setup, you will need the following items. Your brand new Apple TV, a television to which you will connect the Apple TV, the included power cable, and an HDMI cable sold separately. If you will be using your Apple TV 4K with a 4K television, it is highly recommended that you use a 4K HDMI cable, one which supports the latest HDMI 2 standards, including ARC, or Audio Return Channel. If you will be using your Apple TV in conjunction with a HomePod or HomePod Mini, or a stereo pair of two HomePod Minis or HomePods, you will need to have those devices set up as well. We will include a separate tutorial on the HomePod. Please be advised that it is important when conducting the software setup of your, of your Apple TV that you set up the Apple TV to be in the same room in the Apple Home app as the HomePod devices. In this way, you will enable the HomePods to become full-time speakers for your television with Apple TV. This is an unmatched audio experience, which does its best to emulate true surround sound. Let's talk about connecting the Apple TV. Because there are so many varieties of televisions, brands, models, and so on, we will not attempt to discuss the details of how to prepare your TV other than to indicate to you that most televisions will include multiple HDMI ports. If it is possible to do so, use the Apple TV with an HDMI port on your television that has the label ARC, A-R-C, or E-A-R-C. Again, this stands for Audio Return Channel, and it enables some really awesome features which we will discuss later. Plug one end of the HDMI cable 
into the back of your Apple TV. The HDMI port is basically in the center of the rear of the Apple TV. Plug the other end of the HDMI cable into an available HDMI port on your television, preferably one which has the ARC or EARC stamp. Next, plug the Apple TV into electrical power using the included power adapter. And finally, make sure that your television is turned on and is set to the input where the Apple TV has been connected. Within less than a minute, probably only about 30 seconds, the Apple TV will be ready for setup. In order to set up the Apple TV, let's learn the Siri remote. Before you can set up your Apple TV, it is recommended that you already have an Apple device handy, such as your iPhone or iPad. Make sure that Wi-Fi and Bluetooth are turned on on this device and that it is connected to the correct Wi-Fi network, the network on which you wish to set up the Apple TV. Also, be sure that you are signed into your Apple account with your Apple ID and that two-factor authentication is enabled. Please make sure that the Apple Home app is installed on your iPhone or iPad. This app is installed by default, but if it has been deleted, it can be re-downloaded at no cost from the App Store. The Siri remote included with the Apple TV 4K is one of our favorite ways to operate the Apple TV and the best way to get started. This all aluminum remote feels great in the hand and has just a few buttons which we will learn right now. You will know that you're holding the remote in your hand properly when the buttons are on the top and there is a button also available on the right-hand side of the remote. Let's begin by exploring the overall remote. On the bottom edge of the remote is a lightning port. You will connect a lightning cable, such as the included USB to lightning cable, or perhaps a USB-C to lightning cable, to charge this remote. Now the remote should come already sufficiently charged, but at some point you will need to charge it. To do so, plug one end of the lightning cable into a power adapter or computer. For best results, TTJ recommends the Apple 20 watt USB-C power adapter with a USB-C to lightning cable. In this scenario, plug the USB-C end of the cable into the 20-watt USB-C power adapter and plug the other end into the lightning connector at the bottom of the remote. Please allow three to four hours for the Apple Siri remote to be fully charged, and then you can expect months of use on a single charge. Of course, use cases will vary due to the exact amount you are using this remote. So the exact amount of time is subject to change. We've learned about the lightning connector at the bottom of the remote. Next, what's at the top? This remote uses Bluetooth to communicate with your Apple TV, but it also uses infrared IR to communicate with televisions. In this way, you are able to control the power and volume of your TV if you choose to do so. If you will be using HomePods or HomePod Minis as speakers for your Apple TV, the volume buttons will control volume on the HomePods while the power button will continue to control power on your television. With most modern TVs, by default, there will be no configuration necessary and the Siri remote will automatically control your television with absolutely no further setup required. If additional setup is required, this can be done later in the Apple TV settings. The power button. At the very top edge of the remote, on the 
main surface just above the click pad, which we'll learn about shortly, and just below the IR port on the top, you will find a round button, just a small circular button set apart from anything else. The top right corner of the remote. This is your power button. Press and hold this button for two to three seconds to turn on or off your TV and other components. The side button. Moving to the right side of the Siri remote, you will find a long button. This button is your Siri button. Press and hold this button to talk to Siri. Release the button when finished. If you are in an edit field, such as a username or password field, you can also press and hold this button for dictation. It is recommended that email addresses and passwords be spelled. When a capital letter is needed, say the word cap or capital. When you are finished dictating, release the button. Other buttons. The top of the remote moving down from the upper right corner power button to the click pad, which we will discuss shortly. Below that, you have a couple of rows of buttons. The button on the top left, which feels ever so slightly indented, is the back button. This button, as its name suggests, will take you to previous screens, will bring up menus, and will eventually take you back to the home screen. You can press and hold this back button to immediately be taken all the way back to the home screen. Press the button again to turn on the screensaver. Press it yet again to turn the screensaver off and be returned to the home screen. Note that the back button also serves as the accessibility shortcut. When you initially plug in the Apple TV and it powers up, you can triple click this button to immediately turn on voiceover so that voiceover is ready to use during setup. Once you have done this, this also automatically sets the accessibility shortcut to voiceover for all future use. So anytime you wish to turn voiceover on or off, you can simply triple click this back button. Note that if you do not use voiceover during initial setup, it is then necessary to go to settings, accessibility, and to the accessibility shortcut option to manually enable this for voiceover. To the right of the back button, you will find the TV or home button. By default, pressing this button once takes you immediately to the Watch Now Up Next section of the Apple TV app. Pressing it immediately a second time takes you back to the home screen. You can press and hold the TV button to access Control Center, to be discussed shortly. Row 2. Just below the back button on the left-hand side of the remote is the second row of buttons, which begins on the left-hand side with the Play Pause button. When media is playing, pressing this button will immediately pause, and vice versa. To the right of the play pause button is the upper end of the volume rocker. Press repeatedly, or in some cases press and hold, this up side of the button to increase the volume. Of course, press the lower part of it to decrease the volume. The button just to the left of the volume down section of the rocker is a mute button. Press this to mute all sound. Press it again to unmute the sound. Very simple. That is the entirety of the button layout of the Siri remote. So how is everything else controlled? Just above the top row of buttons, that back button and that TV button, you will find a click pad. This is a combination of a directional pad, 
of sorts, and a touch surface. You can press the left, right, bottom, or top of this pad to move accordingly. You can press the center button in the circle to click or select or activate a particular item or button, insert a character, and more. It is also possible to swipe in all four directions on this pad. Swipe left, right, up, or down. And so, as you can probably see, there are use cases in which this is quite powerful and quite meaningful. Want to swipe through a long list? Simply start swiping in any direction. Want more precise control? Click one of the sides of the directional pad. This concludes our brief tour of the Siri remote. Now, let's move on and let's talk about entering text. There are times where we will need to enter text on the Apple TV. There are numerous ways in which this can be done. First off, text can be entered directly using the Siri remote. The keyboard on screen does not appear as a QWERTY keyboard as it does on most devices. Instead, it appears alphabetically with the space at the left followed by A through Z moving right. You will also find below this the ability to access numbers and symbols. Sometimes, depending on the specific use case, common options like .com, .net, and even .edu will exist as well. The bottom row of options in the keyboard allows you to quickly switch between uppercase, lowercase, numbers and symbols. But when you are on the letters A through Z, pressing the play pause button will immediately toggle you between uppercase and lowercase letters. Here's our personal recommendation. Swipe left and right to move quickly through the letters. For example, if you are trying to spell a word with letters that different ends of the alphabet, such as moving from an A to a T, or even a, a J to a C, you could quickly swipe left or right to approximate where you want to be. When you come to within a few letters of what you actually want, press the left and right side, left or right sides of the directional pad for more precision. When you get to the letter or number or symbol that you wish to enter, simply click the center of the click pad. That's how easy it is. Now let's talk about setup. We recommend using your iPhone or iPad during setup. This enables automatic setup. During automatic setup, the vast majority of your information, including Wi-Fi network and password, Apple ID and password, and other settings can quickly and easily be copied from your iPhone or iPad to the Apple TV. The first step in setting up your device is to make sure that the TV is on and the Apple TV is connected and plugged in as described at the beginning of this tutorial. After about 30 seconds to a minute, on the screen will be a prompt asking you to click the center button to complete the pairing process of the Siri remote with your new Apple TV. Simply click once the center of the click pad. Now, if you are a voiceover user, we next encourage you to triple click the top left button in that panel of buttons, the back button, to turn on voiceover. If you triple click and hear nothing, wait three or four seconds, then try it again. If after several attempts you still do not hear any voiceover speech, we suggest checking your connections 
and your input settings. Once voiceover comes on, we encourage you to unlock your iPhone or iPad. Once your iPhone or iPad is on the home screen, begin using the up, down, left, and right directional buttons of your remote to move through choices and the center button to select what you have chosen. For example, you may be asked to select your language and region. Fairly soon, you will be prompted for automatic setup and a message on your iPhone will appear. Bring the iPhone within an inch or two of the Apple TV set-top box to get this message. The message will ask you if you indeed want to use this iPhone or iPad to set up the Apple TV. Just continue. If prompted, enter the code and continue to hold the iPhone or iPad device near the Apple TV itself. After a few minutes, the settings are copied and you are good to go. A few more choices will need to be made using the Siri remote. Again, press the directional buttons to move through the available options, and when you come to the option you want, press the center button on the directional pad to select the option. You will be given choices such as enabling dictation and Siri, enabling the downloading of aerial screensavers, and even choosing your TV provider. If you have a supported TV provider, such as Hulu with Live TV or Direct TV Stream, you can set this TV provider on board as the default TV provider. Log in as prompted with your username and password for the service. And now this TV provider will be stored for other apps that you may install. You will even be prompted to download the corresponding app, such as DirecTV, Stream, or Hulu. This will help you to get started quickly watching TV. You may be asked to confirm other settings again, such as your Apple ID and password, or if you want to allow purchases without a password or require a password after 20 minutes, or always require a password. Within just a few minutes, the Apple TV is set up and you are now on the home screen. Navigating with VoiceOver. The VoiceOver screen reader, as on all Apple devices, speaks the contents of the screen and allows you to navigate in easy and powerful ways. VoiceOver has two main modes on the Apple TV, navigation mode and exploration mode. The default and the mode which you will use for the vast majority of the Apple TV experience is navigation mode. Within navigation mode, there are two forms of navigation, direct touch and follow focus. The default is direct touch. This can be changed under settings, accessibility, and voiceover, choosing the navigation style. Direct touch is the closest comparison to what our sighted counterparts will experience. And on the Apple TV, it works great. Since we're not touching the screen, we're always using a secondary means of navigation and we can easily do things in exactly the same way. Follow focus allows for certain limitations to be put on the means by which we can navigate. Theoretically, making it easier for people who are struggling with certain gestures. For most people, TTJ believes that the default direct touch navigation style will be great. In navigation mode, using direct touch navigation, you can press any one of the four directional buttons and you can also swipe in any direction, up, down, left, or right. For example, the home screen icons are set up in a grid, much as you would see on your iPhone or iPad. To move down to the next row, you can press the down arrow or swipe down. To move left or right, 
you can press the left or right arrows or swipe left or right. And of course, you can press the up arrow or swipe up to move back up to the previous row. If you swipe more aggressively and more quickly, you can move through multiple items at once. For example, let's say you have 10 rows of apps. You're on row number one in column number one. You want to get to column number three in row eight. Perhaps instead of clicking down seven times, you'll swipe just a few times to get down to the eighth row. Then you will press the right directional arrow button twice to move to the third column. When you find the item you want, click the center button. If you need to hear the screen read to you again, Press and hold the play pause button for just a few seconds. During media playback. As media is playing on your Apple TV, such as a movie or TV show, you can often click the left or right directional buttons to jump back or to fast forward by approximately 10 seconds. Note that the exact time and the availability of features like rewind and fast forward will vary depending on app and service. If you wish to have more precise control over rewind and fast forward, you can press the pause button or click the center button to toggle between play and pause, and then you can repeatedly swipe left or right, or in some cases, press the left or right arrows, either repeatedly or with a press and hold. Note that some apps do not allow swiping to rewind and fast forward, but instead use these gestures to change the channel. You can press the down directional arrow button, or swipe down, in most cases of media playback, to bring up a menu of controls. For example, the option to choose subtitles and captions, to choose from a described audio track or a regular track or to change the language, and to choose other audio and video settings. In some apps, this downward click or downward swipe will display the option to bring up more episodes of the currently watched show. In other cases, you will be able to see info or even display additional options like picture in picture. Yet in other apps, you will even have the options to record what is currently being watched, or to restart the currently watched program from the beginning. Some apps also support a swipe up gesture during media playback. This swipe up gesture can be used to enable picture in picture, or in some cases to bring up a live guide. We strongly suggest that you try various click options and gestures such as the ones we've just described during media playback in different apps and with different channels and services. During use in navigation mode, the rotor to be discussed next has very few options, but it has many more options, even customizable options in exploration mode. The rotor. The rotor is a virtual control for voiceover users, which is accessed by placing two fingers on the touch surface click pad and then rotating those two fingers right or left, clockwise or counterclockwise, as if you were turning a dial. This functions exactly the same as it functions on the screen of an iPad or iPhone. When you are in navigation mode, you will find very few options in the rotor. When you are in exploration mode, you will find numerous additional options, and these options can be customized from your voiceover settings under accessibility. You may choose to have characters and words in the rotor, headings, landmarks, 
and more, even voiceover-specific setting adjustments. To switch between navigation mode and exploration mode, perform a two-finger triple tap on the click pad. Again, tap three times with two fingers on the click pad to toggle between navigation and exploration modes. If you use the rotor in navigation mode, it only stays for a few seconds before returning you to normal navigation. So make your selections immediately after turning the rotor. Once you stop using the rotor for about three seconds, the rotor goes away. This is not so in exploration mode. A typical use case for exploration mode is if you want to get more details on a specific item on the screen. Perhaps you need to read a code character by character, for example. So, you can quickly switch to exploration mode with that two-finger triple tap, set the rotor to characters, and then swipe up and down to move by the rotor setting to read by character. When you're finished, perform a two-finger triple tap again to return to navigation mode. This brief overview has been presented to you to help you get started using your Apple TV with VoiceOver. It is very important that you access the rest of the materials we've suggested, such as the Apple TV User Guide. Additionally, this tutorial is one small part of a larger series of resources made available to select customers, such as customers who have our TTJ Premier Protection Plan or others who have obtained this Apple TV Getting Started series. We encourage you to make use of all of the resources in that subscription series. We want to thank you for listening today to this Getting Started introduction on using the Apple TV with VoiceOver. If you have any questions, please send email to support at ttjtech.net. Call us at 814-348-4063 or access quick support via iMessage using your TTJ Premier Protection customer code and the provided address. Thank you so much for tuning in. God bless you and happy viewing. Do not forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And if you'd like, leave a comment. Come back soon for the next installment in TV for the 21st Century.